Hey, how you doing guys? A lot of you wanted to have a Q&A kind of video, so I'm going to go off of your uh, questions. I'm going to read them off. All right. So, first question is, why do you have a Russian flag? I believe uh, the Huntsman video, second part, I think, at the end of it, I laid a knife next to a flag. So, I am Russian, well, second generation, so my dad is Russian, my mom's Ukrainian, or half Ukrainian. My great grandma is Polish, and I believe we have some Jewish blood. So I'm a mix. I never lived in Russia, so I was born in Soviet Union. And when I was 10 years old, my parents took me to the United States, and that is where I live right now. So uh, I live in California, and that is far, as far as I will go with my address, because there, there was one person who wanted to know my address, and I have no idea why. Uh, so next question what is your job well I started working since eighth grade so I did a lot of things I worked in the kitchen washing dishes I worked for a wealth wealthy guy or business owner and I mowed the lawn you know cut the grass uh, wash his cars took his kid to uh, school picked him up stuff like that uh, then I moved up to uh, working and installing fireplaces in uh, brand new houses a lot of heavy lifting uh, from there I went and became a union laborer and I did jobs like uh, demolition you know take down buildings I uh, also did um, big projects like tilt up where they pour concrete walls on the ground and they raise them up you know uh, then uh, I used to be a police officer but uh, we didn't get the budget money and I got laid off so and I went back to being a union labor and right now I work as a, a traffic signal installer my main job is to put out cones close the road so my crew can work and I help them out also uh, we install traffic signals um, ground utilities you know lay pipes for telephone gas stuff like that and we do uh, street lighting also how did I start making knives and who inspired me well in the winter time when it's raining uh, I cannot close any lanes on the road because of the slippery roads and by law you can't do that so unless it's an emergency so I would sit home during the rainy day and I would be on YouTube watching videos and one day I was watching uh, I believe it was Trollsky and his uh, video is named Knife from a Wood Saw. I believe right now it has uh, over 2 million views to this day. And it was pretty interesting that he made a knife out of a saw blade. So then somehow I end up watching another guy, a knife builder, uh, Three River Blades. And uh, he makes camping knives. So that, I was fascinated by all that stuff. Um, I wanted to make my own knife and I, I didn't know what style or anything until I stumbled upon uh, Doug uh, Markaida. He's a martial arts guy and he has a video, a uh, Karambit video, and it's called Karambit Blade Work with Doug Markaida. Uh, it was pretty fascinating the techniques he uses with that karambit knife and I fell in love with the style and the curves of a karambit at work we do a lot of concrete saw cutting so we have blades that go dull you know they go bad and I grabbed one took it home and drew up my own design and made a knife I had no idea what I was doing but it took, that's why it took me uh, almost a month uh, a month to make it, you know. I was making it while, you know, after work, obviously. But that's where I started. Uh, this is what led me to opening my YouTube channel. Basically, in six months, I believe, this channel grew from 12 subscribers to almost 16,000 subscribers I want to thank you guys 
it's been fun and I want to keep going but uh, anyway after making a karambit I never knew CSGO video game existed until I started getting uh, comments like is it MF or FN uh, what is it FN factory new and I had no idea what you guys were talking about so I started uh, researching and found out that uh, there is a lot of knives out there in that video game so I had an idea to start making them because a lot of people want to see those knives and that's how my YouTube channel began uh, so yeah this is my first knife I put a a logo on it since the last time you seen it I'm not gonna sell this knife it's gonna go to my son it's gonna stay in the generations to come and this will be the knife that I look back at and see how far I have gone or became better at knife making so this is gonna stay with me all right um, what else so you guys had a request a lot of you to show all the knives I have made and do show them all in one video so I have all of them here with me except the uh, M9 bayonet it's sold it's gone um, so are the other knives but one of them was going to be shipped today and I un unpacked it just to show you guys let's see so I'll show you how everything went by order the knives that I made so the first one was uh, Karambit right second one was the Huntsman a lot of you wanted to see oh before I go the to the Huntsman Karambit I got a lot of heat from some of you about cutting up the pork meat and throw it in the way I don't eat pork I think it's the nastiest meat out there um, most of you guys don't live in the United States so you might not know how they raise animals here but uh, it's pretty nasty that's why I don't eat it let's leave it at that uh, yeah let's leave it at that that is why I threw it away that's why it cost so cheap and it was the cheapest meat I could buy and test out my knife to see how deep it cuts so okay let's go to um, Huntsman why I did not heat treat this knife so right here you see how this uh, line is I forgot the name of it I was practicing on this side so I was every, everything you see in the video I was practicing on this side. well no actually everything you see in a video is off of this side I was practicing on this side and then making a video on this side this way you guys got to see the better quality side or some so notice how this side is so much bigger or thicker wider than uh, this one I was aiming for this kind of look and that's why I ended up with this so after practicing on this side I came up with a better um, edge or whatever you want to call it fuller yeah that's what it is fuller so that because it's not the same I didn't want to sell this knife to anybody with this kind of quality therefore I didn't want to heat treat it because after you heat treat it you gotta sand it and sandpaper costs money plus I'll be wasting time so I still did show you guys how to make a Huntsman and you've seen all the techniques I used but um, I just didn't want to heat treat it so but I think I will eventually do it later on when I have more time and I don't know what I'm gonna use it for so the third knife that I made was a shadow dagger and I put my logo right here I made a different sheet for it 
So there you go. Actually, it goes this way. Then on the videos that you've seen, the latest ones were these two babies. This one is going to my brother. He wanted a really small clip, lightweight. He wanted me to get the edges as close as possible to the eyelets of the kydex. So I did that for him. Whereas this uh, kydex is bigger or longer, I mean. I think it looks more eye pleasing than this one, but as he requested, I did it for him. But this one has much bulkier, um, it's a tech lock clip. So, here you go. Emails coming in. All right. How long does it take for me to make knives? Usually it takes about two to three weeks, but sometimes it takes longer because when I make a knife, I got a video recorded, stop, continue what I'm doing, then stop, video recorded, maybe from a different angle, stop, continue doing it, making a knife, you know, so that takes away a lot of time. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell how long it takes for me to make a knife. Plus sometimes I can only work on the evening after the, my day job. So sometimes I come home at 7 in the evening. So all I have time is to eat, take a shower and go to bed and get up again 4 in the morning. Uh, so it takes about 3 weeks to make it. Then I have to edit the video post all the, edit, take pictures, edit them, post them on Instagram, uh, Google Plus, and that's where you guys can find them. So, to be honest with you, after I made a karambit, I started making these two knives. Even though you guys seen me make uh, the Huntsman, the Shadow Dagger, oh, and the M9 Bayonet, which is sold. These these two knives were the second ones that I made after the Karambit. And the reason why it took so long, it took me about four months to make them, to finish them. The reason why it took so long is because uh, I had to wait for the steel to come in, and it comes... Uh, comes in bars like this and I order it from a uh, New Jersey steel bearing that's where I get my uh, steel for custom orders but the reason why it took so long is because I was working on these two knives and I was working on this one which you will see in the video pretty soon almost done with it so why 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 was I working on all three of them at the same time? This is a, the steel that I used is a CPM S35VN stainless steel and I cannot heat treat it at home so I had to send it out to a professional heat treating Edwards heat treating services and that's why I want to get all three of them done and ship them out at the same time so I could get them heat treated at the same time. It doesn't matter if you ship out one knife to heat treat or ten knives. It costs you $125 plus shipping. So I want to save money and ship out all three. I wanted to use this one up too but just didn't have time or didn't know the style I want to make a knife out of it. So it's just laying there for now. Um, the next question, uh, what is the cost of tools, uh, 
because a lot of people want to get into making knives so let's go over drill press this is what I got okay this is what I paid I'm just gonna round off the numbers so I bought a drill press four hundred dollars grinder handheld grinder hundred twenty dollars I have about ten files which I believe they're like ten dollars each or seven eight so I spent over a hundred bucks drill bits hundred seventy dollars sandpaper seventy five dollars bench vise four hundred dollars handheld drill about hundred dollars Milwaukee bandsaw three hundred twenty dollars stencil machine which is this baby put your logos with it this thing cost me um, two hundred seventy dollars these little things I paid uh, hundred hundred forty dollars different kinds um, glue seventy dollars kydex rivet um, die the one that punches these things the eyelets that was about seventy dollars Bench grinder, $120. Face mask, that was another $120. Um, I tried to buy the best I can afford, so I wouldn't have to buy it again. There's a saying, buy once, cry once. What it means is, buy the most expensive thing you can afford, and it's going to hurt you. It's gonna hurt your wallet you're gonna cry but you're gonna cry once whereas if you buy something cheap you're gonna spend your money it's gonna break down the road and you'll have to buy it again same thing or more expensive and you're gonna cry again so that's my story do you have a website no I do not um, not yet I do not plan to make one yet because you guys have a lot of requests to make knives and I want to get those done first before I start making custom orders uh, file jig the one that you see that I make bevels with where the file is uh, attached with uh, hose clamps to the metal rod and I put it through those eyelets with the screw on the bottom that's not my idea and I got it from Aaron Goff I follow him on, in, on uh, YouTube he's an excellent knife maker hopefully one of those days I'll uh, buy a knife from him but yeah it, it was his idea I just uh, rigged it up so I could do more of my own style knives uh, but yeah it was his idea that's where I got it from so look him up Aaron Goff uh, you could also look up many, you can go to my uh, YouTube account and look at who I'm following, all the knife makers, and you will learn a lot from them. That's where I learn all my stuff. Uh, guys like Nick Wheeler, the one that makes uh, Bowie knives, I believe his knives are like $1,300 or $1,500, but they're, they're just gorgeous. And he talks a lot about how to sand your knives properly and all that stuff. Um, Aaron Goff, Walter Sorrells, Ecom Knives, 1428, um, Trollski, uh, Three River, Three River, uh, Three River Blades. So, and there's more. So check those guys out. They're pretty good. If you want to know how to build uh, quality knives, they, they don't make CS:GO knives. Just to let you know. Uh, what type of sharpener do you use? I use a Lansky Lansky uh, knife sharpener I got it on Amazon for uh, I believe like $58 I also bought a leather strap for it uh, other than that everything came with it so that's what I use. Um, 
this this uh, Lansky that you've seen in the, uh, the hunting knife video I got it for eleven dollars on Amazon same thing let's see what type of rulers or curved rulers do you use what are they called so they're called French curve rulers I like this one a lot it could give you a nice bevels um, I got these on Amazon too I believe this one's like three dollars and this one I don't know eight or eleven dollars I also use this template it's got a bunch of circles with different dimensions these are not um, yes they are metric and, and inches but mostly they're uh, four inches so that's what I use to design my knives uh, can you make a flip knife or a butterfly knife from CSGO at this moment it is those kinds of knives are difficult for me to make because I do not have a mill mach milling machine and uh, a drill press is not a milling machine drill press when it drills the bit still moves around mill the drill is solid it goes nice nicely down straight so I don't want to make junk knives so I'll, I'll have to wait on those um, I just recently found out from another uh, person who watched my videos and he said that I guess they're not illegal where I live they are illegal if I carry them outside but to own them they're not illegal so I have to look into it I did contact my local police um, officer and asked him if I could make one and he's looking into it but I think he forgot about it so still they will be the last knives that I make uh, can you make a normal CSGO bayonet? When I looked it up on uh, Google, the images, the M9 bayonet and the CSGO bayonet look almost identical, except the spikes on the top. So, I do not want to make almost exactly the same knife twice. I want to challenge myself and make other knives, other style knives. Uh, it's more interesting to me maybe when I run out of knives to make for YouTube videos for you guys then I'll start re repeating myself and make a normal CSGO bayonet I hope you guys understand that um, what is the cost of steel and where do you get it so like I said I get it from New Jersey Steel Baron the cost of steel this is a uh, one a thick and that's what all these knives are made out of you know so it it is a uh, one and a half inches wide by one eighth thick and it was three feet long or 36 inches I paid hundred and four dollars for just the steel um, this is the CPM S 35 VN steel, stainless steel. I believe for this a quarter inch 01. Um, it is a uh, two inches wide, quarter inch thick by three feet. I think I paid sixty four dollars. But this one I can quench at home in oil. Um, these knives I use the 5160 steel and I get it at my local uh, trucks shop they make leaf springs for trucks so when they uh, you know they get them in long pieces and they cut out what they need they you know cut off the ends and stack them away so they have a big pile I come in I grab a bunch of them and I he gives me a price and I take them home so that's how how I get my steel I told you guys about the heat treat the cost so it, it doesn't matter one knife or ten knives it's uh, $125 to heat treat if 
if I was to send my knives out to uh, be professionally heat treated. Um, why do knives cost so much? Well, let me give you an example. The steel itself, I paid uh, $104, right? So, depending on if you could make all four knives out of that bar or not, you know, you might make three knives like me and then the, the fourth piece is just going to be laying around. Um, then you got to send it out to be heat treated. The handles, so let's say um, the steel was, I think, came out like 35 bucks per, per piece. Then the heat treating was another 36 around there. Um, the handles, if you look it up online, I think I bought these for $58, the handles. Right now they're 78 so the prices go up. The mosaic pin, I paid $30 for a little piece like this right uh, these things were I believe two dollars each so then you gotta buy sandpaper you know all that stuff it just takes a lot of time so that's why they cost a lot of money uh, for this knife the handles cost me forty six dollars so when somebody tells me I'll give you fifty dollars for your knife. I tell them which part of the knife do you want to buy. So that's why they cost a lot. 